The purpose of this show, the of this show is to guide you to realign, to realign with habits that get you to live the life, live the life you've always dreamed of. Right. This, this is the Habit-Based Lifestyle Podcast with Jesse Ewing. This is the habit-based lifestyle Where you can access your full potential right now Finally break free from destructive habits That dream life, if you want it, you can have it This is where you transform your health Mind, business, and relationships Or do nothing and keep your life the way it is But if you're ready for change, you're in the right place This is where you're gonna learn how to live a habit-based lifestyle You, you, you are tuning in to the Habit-Based Lifestyle Podcast With, with, with your host, Jesse Yule This is this is the habit-based lifestyle let's go welcome back to the habit-based lifestyle podcast i'm your host jesse Ewell, and today we're going to be talking about your life account so in today's episode i want to talk about you creating a frame around your life similar to a bank account yet this bank account happens to be your currency. It happens to be something that you personally make a deposit in every single day. And I want you to think about your, your life, the areas in your life, like, you know, individual bank accounts or, or individual health accounts, which is what I like to, you know, talk to my clients about. And, and many times the question that often comes up is, you know, where in your life or where in your bank account or where in your health, whether it be physical, you know, mental, emotional, relational, or financial health, like what is the state of your current bank account? What is the, what is the state of your current health in each of these individual areas? And I, you know, I think of this is, is time is our currency. Time is our currency, which means time is, you know, something that we have, you know, that that's a currency. It's either, you know, adding, it's either taking away. It's, it's something that we all have as a currency. Are you cashing in on your time? Are you cashing in on your health? You know, each of us deposit 24 hours a day into our bank, into our health. And, you know, the question is, is what have you deposited into your health bank account lately? So what have you deposited into your physical health bank account lately? Maybe, you know, you're someone who might go to the gym every single day. Maybe you're someone who, you know, may have a a green drink or a green smoothie every single day, but what has that deposit into your bank account? What is that giving you? Has it added, you know, financially to your health bank account? Has it, you know, taken away? My guess is if you've done that consistently, it's adding. But then there's also things that that we can get in the way of our health, such as, you know, whether it be drinking whether it be eating, it's like, hey, we can work out, we can have a, a green drink or green smoothie, but we could eat like garbage the rest of the day. What have you deposited in, into your relationship account today? And you could think of your relationship account as, you know, maybe your marriage, maybe your relationship with your kids. You know, I think a lot of us get into this place of doing things for our, our spouse doing things for our kids and we rationalize what those are. And so oftentimes inside of this conversation, people will say, Oh, well, I'm, I'm leaving my wife messages. I'm, you know, I'm doing these acts of service for her, but they're not really clear on whether or not these things that they're doing are actually adding to their bank account or, You know, they're just not really, you know, we think in our eyes, we're making a $500 deposit when we could actually be making like a a one cent deposit. The truth is, is we really have to understand what are we depositing into that account? Are we depositing, you know, something that's adding value or are we depositing something that's kind of the bare minimum or just checking the box? 
You know, I think of this also in business a lot of times. It's like, how hard are you working in your financial bank account? How hard are you working financially in your business? You know, oftentimes we, we tend to work really hard, but what gets deposited in our account doesn't show for the work that we've done. And, you know, what, what can end up happening is if we just end up checking the box, especially with, you know, these habits that we're doing, and I, and I think of checking the box as a habit you may be doing that you don't know what the impact on that habit is, is actually giving you. And so what does that mean? That means that if I'm working out, the workout should be leading me to a result that I'm looking for in the future. So whether it be in the next 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, six months, it doesn't really matter. But that that habit or that result that I want, one is leading me to that result. And I, and I think about like, imagine if you, you know, you had to take 90 steps over the next 90 days. If you have a habit every single day, that habit every single day should lead you to that result that you want over the next 90 days. And so I think of a habit as like simply, hey, what is that one step that's going to get me closer to what I actually want in the next 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, six months? And so it's no different than, you know, I, I hear a lot of people say, well, you know, here's my morning routine. Here's my, here's what I do every single morning. And, it, and it's often like, hey, well, that's great. But what result is that getting you over the next 90 days? And, and they often say, hey, I have really no idea. I just know that I'm doing these habits. And so what I want you to begin to look at is, is your bank account or are the deposits that you're actually making in your bank account are they getting you the results you want or are they overdrawn? Overdrawn typically means that we're wasting time, we're wasting hours with our habits, you know, and, and yeah, doing something is better than doing nothing. But after a while, most people will stop doing something because they don't know where it's necessarily going to lead them. They don't know the path that they're on. And so the reason they don't know that is the reason they give up on it. See, inside of habits, and inside of living a habit-based lifestyle, the goal for you is to understand that once I determine the lifestyle I want to live, my habits should be supporting that lifestyle. And, and what I find a lot of times is people choose the habits, they don't choose the lifestyle. They choose the habits and they don't understand the lifestyle. And in doing that, they're working backwards and they end up just checking the box and they get bored. You know, they stop doing them. They're not committed. But once you choose the lifestyle you ultimately want, the habits then come into play to support that. If you do one in front of the other, if you do the habits first, then these habits will not support your lifestyle. They will support whatever feels best at that point in time. See, a, for a long time, I was trapped in my own routine because somebody else told me what I needed to do. Somebody else told me what I, what I needed to eat, what I needed to drink. Somebody else told me what I needed to do for my wife, what I needed to do for all these things. And what I ended up happening is I just started doing things. And I was trapped inside of my routine, inside of my habits. And the only place that I really excelled was either in my fitness or my business, because ultimately I knew where those wanted to take me. And sure, in the beginning, you know, doing these, checking the box, it will get you some results. But I can promise you after a while that you will be chasing your results. You will be chasing your habits because you're not really truly committed to them. See, once I understood the lifestyle I wanted to create, then I could ask myself, well, what are the steps that would actually get me there? What are the steps in my day-to-day -day life and day-to-day -day routine 
that would actually get get me there. So I started customizing and formulating those steps. They weren't always the same. Every single day, they didn't mean the same thing, but collectively, they got me to where I wanted to be. See, it took me years to figure this out. It took me years to figure this out. And a lot of times for, for guys is they're successful, you know, especially the guys I work with, um, they're successful in business because all of their habits in business push them to be successful there. The problem is, is most of them don't know the lifestyle that they actually want. And so the lifestyle that they get is a lifestyle filled with, you know, 12, 14, 16 hours a day of business, being a slave to the business, even know that they own their own business, they're a slave to the way that their business operates, meaning that they do literally everything. They have control over everything in their business and they have a very hard time giving that up and allowing someone else to do that. One is because they don't have time to create a system that can support them in what they're doing. They don't have time to back away from their business because they're doing so many things that they don't actually look at, hey, is my business you know, fitting into my lifestyle? No, their business has become their lifestyle. And that is truly what a slave is in business. It's someone who allows their business to become their lifestyle. And they end up doing so many things in their business and no one can do their business the way they do, or at least that's the story that they've told themselves. And I, and I want you to, to break free of this because that is a story that keeps you stuck in your business. See, the number one way that I began to grow my business back when I when I had gyms was as soon as I stepped out and realized that creating a lifestyle, once I had that ideal lifestyle that I wanted, the business began to change. My business began to change and I started getting people to support the business versus me trying to do everything. And I started backing away from being in the business to working on the business and specifically working in the areas that the business really needed the most work, which was in marketing and sales. And I let other people in the business, you know, do the fulfillment side because it's not that I wasn't good at that. It was just that my time was better spent working on marketing and working on sales and creating a framework for people to be successful inside of fulfillment and and letting them do that because in that time and place that's what they they were better at that's what i could help them be better at so when we talk about making investments into a bank account whether it be a relationship your your physical health your financial health this often allows you and ta tells you to take a step back taking into account my habits, you know, the actions I'm doing daily, and also to look at areas where, hey, maybe I'm experiencing lack, maybe I fear, you know, something, losing control, one of those things, but it allows me to step back and connect and say, listen, is this the bank account that I want? Is this the, the lifestyle that I want? Is this the business that I want? Is this the physical health that I want? Because every single day, I'm going to have to make some type of deposit into that account. How wealthy am I in my physical health? How wealthy am I inside of my relational health? How wealthy am I inside of my financial health? And oftentimes, yeah, we look at the bank account because that is the end result. But we also have to look at the relationships that we are creating in those places. But the minute I started making deposits that I knew would actually get me the results and the lifestyle that I wanted, I started working on increasing those two. I started working on the habits that got me the results I wanted in my business and my family and my relationships. And I had to step back and refine my habits. I had to step back and refine my lifestyle because ultimately those things work together. And if they aren't working together, I have to begin to do that. 
So the number one question you got to ask yourself is this, is the lifestyle I'm living in conjunction with the habits that I'm doing every single day? If it's not, then I need to take a step back and I need to reevaluate my habits, my routine, and the things that I'm doing every single day so that I can maximize the results that I get. I can maximize the benefit I get so that I can get out of this exactly what I need. Uh, so I want to thank you guys for being on here today. Let me know if you have questions, concerns, or comments. Uh, text me, habits, H-A-B-I-T-S. If you want to be part of the behind the scene, scene stuff for habit-based lifestyle movement, uh, grab your phone right now. My number is 949-506-5791. Let's connect. If you want to be part of our um, habit-based lifestyle community, uh, feel free to reach out to me, jesse at habitbasedlifestyle.com. And until next episode, have a great day. The purpose of this show, the of this show is to guide you to realign, you to realign with habits that get you to live the life, live the life. you've always dreamed of. Right. This, this is the Habit-Based Lifestyle Podcast with Jesse Hughes.